In this video, we're going to talk about the rational numbers. We're going to define the rational numbers and we're going to prove a simple direct theorem about the rational numbers. So what even are rational numbers? My informal definition is that a rational number is a fraction of different integers, something like 3 divided by 7 or 2 divided by 4 or 100 divided by 1. Anything like that where you've got an integer on the top and a non-zero integer on the bottom. Now, well, speaking about rationals being fractions is perfectly fine colloquially, we actually want to use a theorem where we need to use very precise statements. So I'm going to use universal quantifier to say exactly what I mean by a fraction. In particular, if I have a number n and n is going to be a fraction, then what I'm saying is that there is actually two other integers. There's a p which is an integer, and there's a q which is a non-zero integer, and it has the particular property that n can be written as this quotient, this p divided out by q. You need to have the q be non-zero, otherwise you have a division by zero problem. But in essence, what this particular definition is doing is it's making an existential claim twice. There is this p and there is this q where the p is in the integers and the q is in the non-zero integers. By the way, I have a bit of funny notation here. When I write the z and then the slash and then the set brackets and then the zero, what I mean by that weird notation is that this is the non-zero integers, or in other words, all of the integers minus, that's what the slash means, minus the set that only contains zero, so the non-zero integers. Okay, so now let's go and make a formal proof about this. The proof I'm going to prove today is that the sum of two rational numbers, the sum of two fractions, is another fraction. Okay, so how do we do this? Now, in my previous video where I was talking about evens and odds, we saw how to do a direct proof. And a direct proof, you always began with the assumption and you went until you got to the conclusion. So I'm going to do that too. I'm going to write down, it's my first line of my proof, before I even know how to do this, I'm going to write down what my assumption is. So what is my assumption? I'm saying the sum of two rationals is rational. So in other words, I'm saying I have two rationals. My assumption is I have two rationals. So for my assumption, I write that down, and the only thing I do differently here is I give them names, m and n. Those are my two different rationals. Now I'm going to apply the formal definition of m and n being rational, the definition that we put up on the previous slide. Well, what does it say? For m being rational, it tells me that there's two integers, p and q, or q's non-zero, that it can be written as the quotient. And likewise for n, there's another p that's an integer, there's another q that's a non-zero integer, so that it can be written as this quotient. Or, in other words, to summarize it, it can be written like this, where I have this p1 and q1, and a p2 and a q2. Note, by the way, that because they're different numbers, you want to keep track of the different p's and the different q's. So that's why I use these subscripts, the p1 and the q1, goes with the m, the p2 and the q2 goes with the n. Okay, so I've been in my assumption and my definition of my assumption. The step three that I want to look at is what I usually call manipulations. Manipulations are, okay, well, you've got your definitions of your assumptions. How can you mash them together, use other things you know, and manage to get to the conclusion? Well, to figure out what kind of manipulation I should do, let me take a look at the conclusion. Well, the conclusion says the sum of two rationals is rational, so I want to investigate the sum of m plus n. This gives me a starting spot. So let me go do that. Let me go and put up what the sum of m plus n is. Well, it's the one fraction plus the other fraction. Now, where am I going? My goal is that this sum, this m plus n, is in fact a quotient. That's what I want to have, that it's a quotient. Okay, so if this is a quotient, how can I make p1 over q1 plus p2 over q2 look like just a quotient of one thing on the top, one thing on the bottom. Well, I have an algebraic trick for that. It is lowest common denominator. So I'm going to take the p1 over the q1, and I'm going to multiply that by q2 on the top and q2 on the bottom. I'm going to take the p2 over the q2, I'm going to multiply that by q1 on the top and q1 on the bottom. And doing this way, multiplying the left by q2s and the right by q1s, lets me get the lowest common denominator of q1 times q2 on the bottom. So putting this together as the lowest common denominator, this is what I'm going to get. This p1q2 plus p2q1, all divided by q1q2. Now, why did I do that? I, I wanted to have it looking like a fraction, and now it kind of does. There's a top, there's a bottom. 
So if I really want to conclude that m plus n is going to be a rational, I needed a top and the bottom, and there they are. So let's define a p3 and a q3, my final top and my final bottom, where p3, the top, is going to be the top of this, and q3 is going to be the bottom. So what do I get? p3 is the p1, q2, plus p2, q1, and q3 is the q1, q2. All right, I'm doing good. That's my manipulation. Am I ready to state the definition of my conclusion yet? I think so, with one little twist, is to note that the p3 is the product and sum of integers, so it's an integer, as it needed to be. The q3 is a product of non-zero integers, and so it is also a non-zero integer. And so I can come along here and claim that I have a p3, and I have a q3, where the p3 is an integer and the q3 is a non-zero integer, and my sum can be written as that quotient. Well, I'm doing pretty good right now. Final line is to say the actual conclusion. This was the definition of the conclusion, so now let's write it as an English sentence. It's that my m plus n is rational. And I can put my little QED box at the very end of it because I have finally proven my proof. So this particular structure, assumption, definition of assumption, manipulation, definition of conclusion, and finally conclusion, that five-step process for direct proofs, it served us well for even and odd, and now it's serving us well once again when we're talking about rational numbers.